Okay, Two, a couple of taps. And then I've got a little perfect sandbag. Let's see. So what I wanted to show you, I guess basically, remember, circle of 1.618 or 0.618 times by 1.618 gets you this circle. Now I've drawn a wider circle combining these two, yeah? There, it's just a light one, you can, you can barely see it, but there it is. It just gave me the bottom of the egg. Okay, so then I drew a bigger circle combining this one and this one, yeah? Like that. Now. <coughs> I don't have the whole pentagon thing, but in the book, wooden books, you, you can, you, you know, you, you can Google how you can draw pentagon. But I try to see, how do I draw this? I mean, sure, with my hand, I can draw this. But when I'm on the land building this to 12 meters diameter, you know, <laughs> I don't have my hand to draw like, like these curves. So I need to find a way. So this is what I found. Um, this is half of five centimeters, yeah? Okay, so I found a way, and I'm going to replicate this on the land. So five centimeters, which is 50 centimeters in real life, or up from the circle, look what happens. Boom. You got it. Yeah? So this is, so basically, that's my mark for this scale model. It's five centimeters up from that, and then I'll be, which is 50 centimeters, and then I'll be able to draw this. So mm -hmm. I'll just have to uh, replicate this one to 10. That's why the model is so important because, and especially if you're doing a model one to 10 or one to 20, you know, you, you know so you, the scale is really easy. Then you just times everything by 10 when you're doing this in real life. So models are great. I'm, a, I'm just starting and I'm already getting a lot of realizations of ah, aha, ding, like a light bulb. So I'd like to show you how to make the little clay, clay sandbags. Okay, so first I make a little bowl. So I'm just going to give you a close up. Yeah, make a little bowl and then I spread it with my hands. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. And then I take a little piece of wood. And with a bit of pressure, I just spread it out. If I just carry on like this, it'll just go up and down, up and down. Making. Um, you know, it will go up and down by itself and make into a little bag. So sometimes I have to even it out. Uh huh. And then I just use a glass jar. Okay. Two, a couple of taps. And then I've got a little perfect sandbag. I love Super Adobe. As you can see behind me is a little dome made with students there and I'm basically wanting to see if you go there um, I'm wanting to see whether if if I follow the geometry of uh, Lancet Arch will this dome stand by itself if I have this huge opening here consider so because that's never been done it's either a fully circular dome like that one outside the window but cutting it in half, you know, or having a vault with super adobe bags is something I haven't seen. Um, meaning, chick, 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 you know, well, it's going to go like this all the way to the top. And then here I'm going to have a geodesic 
geodesic um, quarter sphere. Okay, standing in the light. Um, and here we're going to have another greenhouse. So it's going to be greenhouse. It's going to be a geodesic greenhouse. And here is going to be a, a, like a acre dome bubble, but with another geodesic um, sphere. Um, between these two parts will be a straight wall. And that's why I think it's going to work because you I'm going to have a super adobe wall, which I'm starting here. And basically this wall is going to lock this from popping out. Um, and here's going to be a beer vegetarium, like a submersed garden, tiered garden with lots of, lots of uh, greens. And off this wall, off this wall will come a secondary greenhouse. So I'm designing an airship for really cold, cold climate. And I'd love to take this opportunity to invite you to um, come and build the T8 with us in Russia on 24th of May. Um, yeah, so I'm making a model 1 to 10 um, and we're going to do it. It's going to be a future printed 3D house, which I'm going to pitch to Elon Musk for Mars. And of course behind I'm going to have a water tank. There is a foundation for the water tank. Uh, where these friends are, <laughs> are going to have a biochar filter, one, two, three, four. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a fully off-grid house with its own constructed wetland here. It's going to be more bags, going to be a little constructed wetland here in this gap. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fully off-grid airship, come tiny house, but of course it was a Russian oven. So it can withstand minus 30 Celsius. So I look forward to be seeing you on 24th of May for a three-week workshop. It's $1,600, including food and accommodation, for three weeks. As I'm doing this model, I'm developing the geothermal heat, which will be plugged in from underneath the house. Um, basically from underground, allowing warmed up air that's basically going to be coming from two meters below the ground level to enter the home, which is already going to be 10, 20 degrees Celsius warmer than the outside air in winter. So I'm developing a home for the upcoming ice age, if some of you um, believe that that's what's happening. I think the weather is definitely up for a ride. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it's not about fear, it's about developing a home that we can build ourselves um, with our family and, yeah, and live comfortably, cozy and happy. So that's what we're designing. It's going to be a Russian oven here which is going to basically warm up the entire space to add, add a few extra degrees. Um, another greenhouse, another greenhouse, another greenhouse, and a massive wall here, which will provide a greenhouse, which will go over the whole thing, um, basically providing a double greenhouse. So for Canadian um, and Siberian and Russian winters, our T8 home, here it comes. So we're gonna make a geodesic model. I've got some nice barbecue sticks, uh, skewers. That's gonna go on the front face here. You'll see. So I've just, uh, you know, any any form of something that you can bind them together. Obviously, flatten them to one side. The, the, that this side, because here they're a bit different on top. So I've went to desertdomes.com. My favorite site for figuring out the geodesics. And it's basically a dome calculator. You put in your radius and then it gives you the strats, which is quite cool. So for five eighths, so four eighths is a half a dome, four and the three frequencies are five eighths. These are my sizes. But uh, so I've got uh, 80 pieces at 85. Yeah, I'm just gonna basically chop them. 85 millimeters and mark them and cut them um, I'll be using this saw the, uh, because it's quite fine grain it won't split so much mm. 
I'm just gonna mark them so I don't get confused so I can see them and uh, A's are much smaller than others but uh, B and C's for three frequency dome are only three millimeters different so now I'm just gonna start putting them together and I'll show you so it starts with uh, five A's which are my red ones surrounded by B's you know and I'm not gonna give you a whole instruction on the geodesic there's millions just the way I'm starting and I'm gonna carry on so I've got five A's I, I really I don't want to fuss with this I'm not making a model for the sake of making a beautiful model uh, I need to test out my whole house design and visualize it and and as you build you're already figuring out I can see there's already a problem if I try and have a gap so I need to have them like a going as a spiral so one connected to that one Next into that one, you know, so it's like a spiral almost. So, and this is how why you do models, you're figuring stuff out. So yeah, I'm gonna go into the, in the spirit, I think. I'll just do one star for the camera and then I'm gonna do intermediate pieces. So I pre-glue little pieces and one layer at a time. If you put too much glue, they all start coming apart. And what else I wanted to share with you is the really cool fireplace we're going to build. A Russian fireplace which will have pipes running through the house and use the house as an accumulator of heat. It's going to be very efficient. And the walls are going to be actually used as a thermal mass for really cold climates. So it can warm up the walls and there will be an insulation behind this insulative layer separating from the water tank and the house it's into two separate units with insulation all around and the whole house is going to be buried so the heat is going to stay in there just like an earthship Let's see. Now for me it's just a model, I don't need it perfect. I just want it to be seen. To to feel how the material feels when I really am gonna build this in real life. You know? So I don't need it super sexy. Just practical. Yeah, so I've got a little cardboard underneath, and that's what probably I'll have to do. I have to do a little um, ferro cement, little roofer key or mesh or some guidance just for the little top part, and then guide my bags. So I'm just gonna play with it and see what's the perfect. I'm most probably gonna have it come to the end, or possibly even remove the sandbag. Yeah. See, I've got a little cardboard just as a little guide. 